shout out to bring our Q Julius, she legend. We're gonna do a joint interview, yeah? Yeah, yeah we'll do a joint interview, Julius. Thanks for the support. You're a legend. Um, from your girls, Raven and Ellie. Welcome to the mother Relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. A story that has gotten a lot, and I mean a lot of people's attention. Per a tweet from Lance Pugmire of the LA Times, told by DAZN Boxing, DAZN themselves, that it generated, it being the Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin trilogy, 1.06 million pay-per-view buys through subscribers and outside buys for Canelo versus Triple G3. A vast difference from the 600,000 max that two industry insiders reported to me Tuesday. The first two bouts did 1.3 million and 1.1 million on HBO Boxing. Tuesday night, Dan Raphael published a story saying that the pay-per-view underperformed. Claiming that the buy rate for the pay-per-view domestically was just under 600,000 buys between 500,000 and 600,000. And to that, Eddie Hearn himself tweeted, Dan, of those buys, the huge majority were in the U.S., those buys being the million reported buys per Zone's press release. And he added, you were well out. When Dan broke that story on Tuesday night, I didn't believe it. I think a lot of people wanted to believe that the pay-per-view underperformed, would underperform. I think that a lot of people chose to run with those numbers, even though it was quite strange to get pay-per-view buy rates in so soon after the pay-per-view. Better still, I was privy to relevant information hours before Lance Pugmire broke his story. I mean, I said it Tuesday night during a live stream here on the channel. I said it when the news first broke. I'm not buying that 500,000 to 600,000 number. No, that's, that's not what I was expecting. Nothing about the market and nothing about Canelo Alvarez's metrics indicate nothing about the reaction that this fight got on the ground, at the weigh-in, those who were in attendance. Nothing about this fight indicated to me that it was set to underperform the way that Dan Raphael was reporting it underperformed. I was expecting a buy rate between 700,000 and 900,000 buys. In any event, Eddie Hearn responded to Dan Raphael's report saying, you really think it did 430,000 buys outside of the United States? Dear, oh dear Daniel, to which Dan Raphael replied, do you really think the pay-per-view generated enough to cover the two main event purses? Well, Dan, he doesn't have to think. He's gonna know. He's in the know. He's in the loop. You're not. The most you can do is rely on what intel is relayed to you via your sources. And your sources may be relaying partial intel to you or inaccurate intel to you. But your sources aren't gonna know more about it than Eddie Hearn and his own. What are you gonna try to tell him? You're gonna tell him what his event did when he's got the receipts and you don't? Eddie Hearn responded to Dan Raphael by saying, have you ever heard of something called gate revenue? Also, that's irrelevant. What's relevant is your reporting is miles out. There are a lot of people that wanted this fight to be a monumental failure for Eddie Hearn, a monumental failure for DAZN. Now, in the case of Dan Raphael, that might not necessarily be the case. In his case, he might just have a bruised ego for being called out on bad reporting and inaccurate intel, inaccurate information. And I say it all the time. A lot of the journals these days are just focused on getting a story out there, getting it out there fast, getting it out there as fast as they can, whether it's true or not. So even if I go with Dan Raphael's estimation of what the pay-per-view did domestically at the box office. Let's crunch some numbers. It was reported that the guaranteed cash to the fighters, 45 million to Canelo and 20 million to Gennady Golovkin, it was reported that there were at least $65 million in guaranteed purses for the fight. And if you crunch that initial set of numbers that Dan Raphael reported, what you were basically looking at was $60 million between what it might have brought in at the gate and what Dan was estimating it brought in at the box office. $60 million, that would mean it would have been just short of $5 million to cover the guaranteed purses and perhaps other operational costs. That's based on Dan's numbers. But now that we have the real numbers that are confirmed by Eddie Hearn and DAZN themselves, it did well over 19 million at the gate. It did 22 million. Yeah, I cooked up some raw numbers. The announced attendance for the fight multiplied by $1,000. If the cheapest ticket 
to be there was at or around $1,000. Multiply that by the announced attendance, and you'll get a ballpark figure of what it brought in. And what it actually brought in was well above that ballpark figure. The ballpark figure... The ballpark figure was a little over $19 million. What it actually brought in, the real number, the real figure, was $22 million at the gate. And the estimated $41 million that it would have brought in at the box office based on Dan's numbers, well, that number shot up exponentially based on the confirmed figure, the confirmed numbers via DAZN and Eddie Hearn themselves, making this event a monumental success, which... Eddie Hearn's competitors and his critics, they're not going to be happy about. No, I don't imagine that Leonard Ellerby and Stefan Espinoza are at all pleased to hear that the event was a success, that it didn't flop. Stefan Espinoza himself, Showtime executive Stefan Espinoza, that's been in bed with the PBC for a very long time now, says, Can anyone explain what this gibberish means? More than 1.06 million buys generated worldwide, including pay-per-view and DAZN subscriptions. Since when do pay-per-view buys include subscriptions? If they do, we've been way under reporting. Hint, they don't. It's intentional obfuscation. Obfuscation is what you've been doing with your own pay-per-view buys on your own platform for years now. Since when has Stefan Espinoza, the Showtime Network, or Leonard Ellerby been the beacons of transparency for what a pay-per-view does? You tell me, when has either Showtime, Stefan Espinoza, or Leonard Ellerby done a press release for how one of their pay-per-views performed? Never. Not to my knowledge, and certainly not in recent memory. Hell, we're still waiting for an official press release as to what Javante Davis versus Isaac Cruz did at the box office. You want to talk about obfuscation? Let's talk about obfuscation, Stefan Espinoza. This is what Stefan Espinoza had to say himself when he was questioned about how one of the pay-per-views on his network, how one of Showtime's pay-per-views performed, and why Showtime didn't release a figure. Stefan Espinoza said, same reason other networks don't share all their business info. Streamers almost never share their viewership numbers, and promoters rarely share full fighter pay. Not all business results are meant for public disclosure, particularly when it relates to an individual's pay, and yet you're accusing Eddie Hearn of obfuscation. Your own words are the definition of obfuscation. Deliberate obfuscation. Showtime, unlike the zone. They don't actually do official press releases as far as how their box office fights perform at the box office. They never do. Whatever figures are put out there are put out there by journos, and these are ballpark figures that often read like hyperbole based on the journos' inside sources. Whereas the figures we're receiving here aren't by way of some journalist's quote-unquote inside sources. They're coming to us by way of a press release from DAZN themselves. And last time I checked, Showtime doesn't do those. No, they're all for obfuscation when it comes to their own box office fights and their own box office events, but they want full transparency. Oh, they'll get out a magnifying glass in a heartbeat when it comes to Eddie Hearn and what he's doing and how a pay-per-view performs on his own. They're telling you how the pay-per-view performed. You just don't want to accept it. And perhaps the reason you don't want to accept it is you don't want to accept that you're being out-hustled in your own backyard, in your own neck of the woods, by a Brit. A Brit you claim doesn't know what he's doing. Are you sure about that? DAZN has issued a statement to indicate that last weekend's pay-per-view event, which featured the trilogy fight between Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin, generated a little over one million pay-per-view buy purchases. However, the streaming app was very clear that the buy rate figure was a worldwide number. It was reported earlier this week by longtime boxing scribe Dan Raphael of Fight Freaks Unite that Canelo versus Golovkin in three generated between 550 and 575,000 buys in the United States, which industry insiders viewed as a disappointing number. And Eddie Hearn debunked that number himself when he stated that most of the buys that the pay-per-view brought in came from right here in the U.S. of A. The zone further stated, Canelo vs. Golovkin 3 claims the title of the number three biggest boxing event globally on the zone since its inception and the second biggest boxing event in the United States since its 2018 launch. Moreover, DAZN was once again the most downloaded sports app in the world, in addition to being the highest grossing app of any category in the United States. Additionally, DAZN sought tremendous growth 
across its commercial premise partners, including over 71% across bars, restaurants, casinos, and cinemas, compared to Canelo's last fight against Dimitri Bivol in May. This included fans all across the nation coming together to watch live in over 680 cinemas in the United States alone. Engagement records were set on social media as well, including TikTok fight night content that was the highest performing of any DAZN boxing event in history. 7.9 million views. Let me break this down for you. Canelo Alvarez was able to sell over 800,000 pay-per-view buys on the Showtime platform with a little-known Tennessean with a belt named Caleb Plant, who brought next to no marquee value to the table as he himself was not a box office draw, not a box office star. He never actually performed in the box office because he'd never been on pay-per-view. That was his debut. He was able to sell a little over 800,000 buys with Caleb Plant. A little over 500,000 buys with a little known Russian light heavyweight. Now, Gennady Golovkin, unlike those guys, he actually has marquee value. Marquee value that isn't exclusive to the United States. Essentially, Canelo Alvarez had a more well-known dance partner this past weekend than what he had in his last two fights. A guy who actually had name value of his own. What you essentially had this past weekend was two well-known guys, not just one, who have history. Set to fight the weekend of a major Mexican holiday, and it just so happens that both of these guys have a lot of Mexican fans, Mexican and Chicano fans here in the United States. Not exclusive to the United States. These are two of the more well-known guys in the entire sport across the world, across the globe, and DAZN being a global streaming app that doesn't just cater to one market it doesn't just cater to americans what did you think that canelo alvarez was going to do less buys with gennady than what he did with caleb plant are you stupid or something there are those out there who wanted to attribute the buy rate for canelo versus plant due to the showtime platform on the premise that the fight got more exposure because it wasn't on an app are you living in the stone age or something Everything is on apps these days, my friend. Streaming isn't just the future. Streaming is here, and it's here and now. Everybody's using apps. Everybody's streaming everything. There are new streaming platforms popping up all over the place. You tell yourself that because it's Matchroom promoting this thing, and because the fight is going to be going down on a streaming app, Nobody knows about it. Eddie Hearn, he's a terrible promoter. He don't know how to promote fights in America. But if he don't, you explain to me how all those hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people knew to show up for the Canelo versus Golovkin weigh-in. How did they know to be there if not for the promotion that the fight received? And you saw what the announced attendance was. 19.5 thousand people showed up to the fight. 19.5 thousand were there. And you're telling yourself that Matchroom didn't know how to sell this fight. They didn't know how to promote it yet all these people knew where to go and where to be so they could watch this thing go down and all of that happened by accident this is cognitive dissonance if it's anything inconsistent thoughts or beliefs that are inconsistent with reality itself you saw how many people showed up to the weigh-in you see how many people were there during the main event because everybody's not going to be there during the undercard fights it's the main event they're all going to show up for and you saw how many people were there during the main event and you still tell yourself that matchroom didn't know how to sell this fight so then where the hell did all these people come from and how the hell did all these people know to be there 22 million at the gate that's better than even the best guesstimates for what deontay wilder and tyson fury brought in at the gate yeah their numbers anywhere between 13 million and 19 million whereas this this brought in 22 million dollars at the gate 1 million pay-per-view buys in total and most of those buys came from right here in the u.s of a because let's be honest where would most of those buys come from a bunch of brits over there in the uk at four in the morning it's just plain old denial in some circles at this point because what we're talking about here isn't a ballpark figure by way of some journo and his quote unquote sources we're talking about an official press release showtime themselves don't even do those why would they most of the time their numbers suck but naturally the boo birds are gonna do what boo birds do boo birds like leonard ellerby who said he might need a little cheering up so let's sing him a song ain't no sunshine at the zone to which eddie hearn replied 
Blimey, Lenny. We just did one million buys. When's the last time you were involved with a fight that did more than about a hundred thousand? And don't count Floyd because you were just packing his jock strap. To which Leonard replied, Stop it, Edward. Thought I'd send you a little song to cheer you up. Let me know if you need me, Floyd, Stefan, or Al, to show you how to do the big boy stuff. Get the fuck out of here. FYI, every major player over here is laughing at you. You don't know what the fuck you're doing in the U.S. To which Hearn replied, could have done with you last week, to be fair. The cues for Starbucks were outrageous. Leonard responded by saying, no time to be going back and forth with you, trying to get big boy shit done. You know, that record-breaking stuff you know nothing about. Hope you cheer up, mate. To which Eddie Hearn replied, delete your Twitter, mate. You've had an absolute stinker. What big boy stuff is Leonard Ellaby doing? He promotes one fighter and does about two shows a year. Yeah, when he's not getting the coffee for Floyd now. He's a glorified water boy. You're literally talking to a guy who's doing shows transatlantically, big shows, not small hall shows, big shows, with big names, transatlantically in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Saudi Arabia, in Abu Dhabi, in Australia, Uzbekistan, Spain, Italy, while you're making coffee, promoting one fighter, just one fighter, not an entire stable, not a bunch of guys, not a bunch of girls, one guy, just one guy, doing approximately two, two shows a year. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but not every PBC fighter and not every PBC show involves Mayweather promotions. Most of them don't. The PBC is a conglomerate of sorts of smaller promotional outfits that have smaller stables like Samson Lukowicz and Tom Brown, Chino Maidana, Sean Gibbons. Leonard Ellaby and Mayweather Promotions are just one among them. And are, um, Mayweather Promotions is Mayweather Promotions, not Leonard Promotions or Leonard Ellerby Promotions. You're an employee, Leonard. You do about two fights a year, total. Two fights a year when you're not making coffee. Carrying spit buckets. That's how you can reconcile why it is Leonard Ellerby has so much time to spend on social media worrying about what the zone's metrics look like when he can't be bothered to answer questions as to what the buy rates for Javante Davis's fights are and those are the only fights that he promotes he says he's breaking records what records what the record at the Barclay Center the funniest thing about all of this is that even if you decided to go with the most modest estimates for what Canelo versus Triple G3 did it's still more substantially more than what any of Leonard Ellerby's shows are bringing in at the box office and what they're bringing in at the gate. And we're not talking about UK shows, we're talking about this show right here in America, which is bigger than any show Leonard's promoted this year and last year. This is what cognitive dissonance looks like. His beliefs about Eddie Hearn are inconsistent with reality itself. Yeah, he's still living in the past. Still thinking about the glory days with Floyd when Floyd was an active boxer. You didn't build Floyd Mayweather. You were just along for the ride, Leonard. Now, you're little more than his employee. Leonard's in denial. So, Stefan Espinosa. They both are, because have you actually seen what Showtime's metrics look like? You've been seeing a lot of big fights on Showtime this year. They're still trying to get Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence Jr. over the line. Go ahead, be in denial if it makes you feel better.